Our nation is now confronting two serious challenges to the rule of law. The first is a long-standing one, but was recently crystallized and driven home by the killing of George Floyd in Minneapolis. The video of the police conduct in this episode, as I said before, is harrowing. When you watch it and imagine that one of your own loved ones was being treated this way and begging for their lives, it is impossible for any normal human being not to be struck to the heart with horror. This matter is being pursued by both the state and the federal government. The state has filed already second degree murder charges against one of the officers and aiding and abetting charges against the other three officers. As we typically do in cases such as this, the Department of Justice and the FBI is conducting a parallel and independent investigation into possible violations of federal civil rights laws. The President has directed me to spare no effort. We are coordinating uh, our work with the Attorney General of Minnesota and as a matter of comedy, the, part, the Department of Justice typically lets the state go forward with its proceedings first. This afternoon, our United States Attorney in Minnesota and the FBI Special Agent in Charge of our Minneapolis field office, the FBI's field office, will attend a memorial service for Mr. Flo Floyd. Today is a day of mourning. And the day is coming soon, I am confident, when just, justice will be served. George Floyd's death was not the first of its kind, and it exposes concerns that reach far beyond this particular case. While the vast majority of police officers do their job bravely and righteously, it is undeniable that many African Americans lacked confidence in our American criminal justice system. This must change. Our Constitution mandates equal protection of the laws and nothing less is acceptable. As the nation's leading federal law enforcement agency, the Department of Justice will do its part. I believe that police chiefs and law enforcement officials and leaders around the country are committed to ensuring that racism plays no part in law enforcement and that everyone receives equal protection of the laws. In October 2019, the President established the first Commission on Law Enforcement since the 1960s. And I am meeting with them later this month, and I have been talking to law enforcement leaders around the country and in the weeks and months ahead, we will be working with community leaders to find constructive solutions so that Mr. Floyd's death will not have been in vain. We will work hard to bring good out of bad. Unfortunately, the aftermath of George Floyd's death has produced a second challenge to the rule of law. While many have peacefully expressed their anger and grief, Others have hijacked protests to engage in lawlessness. Violent rioting, arson, looting of businesses and public property, assaults on law enforcement officers and innocent people, and even the murder of a federal agent. Such senseless acts of anarchy are not exercises of First Amendment rights. They are crimes designed to terrify fellow citizens and intimidate communities. As I told the governors on Monday, we understand the distinction between three different sets of actors here. The large preponderance of those who are protesting are peaceful demonstrators who are exercising their First Amendment rights. At some demonstrations, however, 
There are groups that exploit the opportunity to engage in such crimes as looting. And finally, at some demonstrations, there are extremist agitators who are hijacking the protests to pursue their own separate and violent agenda. We have evidence that Antifa and other similar extremist groups, as well as actors of a variety of different political uh, persuasions, have been involved in instigating and participating in the violent activity. And we are also seeing foreign actors playing all sides to exacerbate the violence. The Department of Justice is working to restore order in the District of Columbia and around the nation. Here in Washington, we are working with the local police, the citizen soldiers of the National Guard, and other federal agencies to provide safety and justice.